Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Now, that unwritten rule of alternating power between North and South in Nigeria is being put to the test once again, with Southern governors insistently making the case that after eight years of a Northern president, the next head of state should be produced by the South. The next presidential ballot is, of course, in 2023, and the governors of the South have essentially thrown down the gauntlet. But what if their Northern counterparts choose to pick up the gauntlet and wage a fight. Well, analysts say this will open the way for what they predict will be increasingly vicious sniping, or worse, from both sides. Governor's forum at the end of his meeting ads today revealed the situation in the country and focused on the current security situation, constitutional amendments, and petroleum industry bills. The forum reviewed the security situation in the country and commended the security operatives for their relentless efforts in restoring security and safety. We commiserate with families and loved ones who have fallen in the line of duty. The forum re-emphasized the need for state police. The forum set a timeline of Wednesday, the 4th of September 2021, for the promulgation of the anti grazing law in all its member states. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the publisher of Daybreak newspaper, Dr. Austin Maher, who's also a lecturer at the International Institute of Journalism here in Abuja, and by the legislative expert and public affairs analyst, Chibuzo Okereke, who's also the convener of the National Political Equity Movement in Nigeria. Thank you to both of you for coming in. And um, Dr. Maho, this demand by Southern governors that the region produce Nigeria's next president, what do you make of it? Is it likely to strengthen the agitation for a Southern president? You know, of, of all the agenda or the, from the communique they put out after they are missing, you know, if you look at, I think it's a five point demand six point six point mm. of all of them that one to me is a little bit confusing because i will want to believe that it's a foregone conclusion that the presidency is moving to the south why but is it a foregone conclusion a foregone conclusion in the sense that one the apc for instance has already although not officially it right. can be assumed that they have zoned the presidency to the southern part of the country because currently they are shopping for the chairman of the party and they are not looking if you look at tradition they are not looking to the northern part of the country to, to the southern part of the country to get a national chairman for the party but rather the north you can have a party chairman from the north and also the president from the north it has never been a tradition so for the fact that they are shopping for the party chairmanship from the northern part of the country it indicates that obviously they are going to zone the it suggests yes it, or indicates then added to that one of most of the v political voices in the north including someone like Erofi, is even saying look the presidency should go to the south and he himself has excluded himself from contesting for the presidency come 2023 so if you put all of this together one can reasonably say well the north has considered you know the 2023 presidency to the south so bringing it to the four burner they may have maybe they have information that many of us are not priv privileged to it could be that they are trying to emphasize it they are trying to tell their northern counterpart that look the presidency must return or come back to the south mm. but at the end of the day when you push such there are things there are political things you walk out behind the scene i didn't feel that should sincerely i don't feel that should have been part of the, the communicated the issue yesterday. Right. Well, I mean, they, they clearly felt, uh, Chibuzo Kereke, that it was important to make that point stridently um, because, as, as uh, Dr. Maho said, they may have information that we're not aware of. We certainly know that that tradition 
of alternating power means that, for example, if you, because I've heard some of them saying this, some of them being some people from other different parts of the country, um, the, the idea of alternating power meant, meant, meant that a northerner would normally have stood for president in 2011. That, that's what they, people from the north often hearken back to. Um, they, they, you know, some of them backed Atiku Abubakar at the time, the former vice president to be the PDP candidate at that time. But good luck, Jonathan, using his power of incumbency, won the nomination. So there's a question mark over whether or not this rotation of power follows this kind of, you know, to and fro between North and South. Okay, yeah, I think that uh, uh, that statement is very important, mm -hmm. one. And for them to consider it important is in line with principles of democracy. Because when you are in a democratic setting, one of the key things you do is to voice out your aspirations. And it's important that they have... Uh, also, uh, you know, done that. And then uh, looking at uh, Nigeria, democracy is not the same mm. everywhere. Nigeria's democracy is unique for many reasons. And as you know, there are certain people in the north who are putting one or two together and saying that our president, late President Yara Dua did only uh, two years. And then somebody from the south came and did six years. Absolutely. And then if you add it to President uh, Obasanjo, uh, eight years, they are, you're going to have 14. So they are aware those permutations are going on. Mm. So that is important for them to give it a voice. And what is key is that the people that have made this statement are, is a bipartisan statement, not just from one uh, uh, political party, mm. but people from two major parties. And I think that what they are doing is to find direction for leadership for the country by rising above partisan uh, concern and sending a message that this is important for the unity of the country. Mm. And for me, it's important that they put that statement in that uh, resolution. So that, not that a Northerner will not contest, but a direction for Nigerian presidency that is beyond politics, for unity, for inclusion, for fairness, for justice, that this is how we should go in line with the rising tensions we are having because it's also connected to politics. Right, okay, uh, let me bring you in, Dr. Maher, because w when you say that a northerner can still contest, I mean, w what does that mean in, in practical terms? Because uh, from what I understand, and I, I may be wrong, the two main political parties normally field the candidates and they make the choice, like, you know, okay, we're going to zone it to this, that, or the other thing. And they both fielded northern candidates in the 2019 presidential election. They are yet to take a decision on whether they'll cede their tickets to the south. Um, what are the issues there that might be a reproach to, to making that decision? No, the, the, the issue, like, like he said, I agree with him. That is why I said earlier that, see, the southern governors may have access to information that mm. we don't have access to. And if you watch the, the political terrain in the country as it is playing out, there are, there, there are moves. You, you know, there are people who feel that 2023... You know, because of the state of insecurity in the country, because of you look at what the what the information we got yesterday about the electoral act that mm. is an attempt to vote electri electronically and not transmit the result electronically. It doesn't make sense. So you may f you you may begin to feel that there are undercurrents of play going on within the policy, the the, the policy to retain power in the north. Mm. This permutation are there. You know, they say twenty four hours is a very long period of time in politics. Absolutely. Not to talk of when we, the period of time is between now and 2023. A lot can still happen. Yeah. So that is why I said earlier that the southern governors may have access to information that we don't have access to. Okay. And, and, and that may have forced their hand to say, look, right. whatever permutation is going on, we are towards watching. We are watching. Okay. And insisting that, look, 2023 is the turn of the south. Mm. For crying out loud, Bori has done... Uh, it's straight years. Mm. It's straight years. Okay. Um, let, um, let, let me just um, ask you guys to hold on. We'll come straight back. I'll, I'll let you finish when we come back and then we'll come to you. You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our analysis of the statement issued at the end of a meeting of Southern Governors in Nigeria. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anya Golden. Now as Nigeria gears up for the 2023 presidential election and agitation for a southern president continues to grow, the country's southern governors have demanded that presidential power rotate to the south. At the end of a meeting in Lagos, the governors issued a six-point statement in which the question of a southern president in 2023 featured prominently. But there were also other matters. They took issue with the removal of the electronic transmission of election results from the Electoral Act, protested against the proposed 30% share of profit for the exploration of oil and gas in the basins, and rejected the proposed 3% share of oil revenues to the host community as contained in the Petroleum Industry Bill. They also gave their members a deadline of the 1st of September to effect the anti-open grazing law in all of Nigeria's southern states. And there were a host of other issues as well. And with me in the studio, the publisher of Daybreak newspaper, Dr. Austin Maho, who's also a lecturer at the International Institute of Journalism here in Abuja, and the legislative expert and public affairs analyst, Chibuzo Okereke, who's also the convener of the National Political Equity Movement in Nigeria. Thank you for staying with us. And uh, we interrupted you before we went on a break, so I apologize. Okay. But let's move on from there, since mm. we've kind of beaten that horse uh, quite a bit. Do you think this inter-ethnic and regional competition for power in Nigeria weakens or strengthens Nigeria's democracy? Now, if, you, if you are looking at, because it, what we are actually looking at is the meeting of the 17 Southern governors mm. yesterday. And if you look at the history of Nigeria's political development, especially in the last six years, comprehensively, I will say this is the first time the southern part of the country, southern governors are coming up, coming together across party line, like you observe, APCP. And across the, ethnic, ethnic lines, because lines. they're different com ethnic groups. Com yeah, coming together to forge a common front, to make statement that you say is binding on all of them. It's, it's like a follow-up to the, to the Asaba Accord. You know, if you look at most of what they said, the community from the communicated the issue, it's a follow-up. And irrespective of uh, the federal government and the attorney general's grandstanding about open grazing, they have restate, reinstated their position about open grazing. So that's open, definitely open, going yes. ahead. So if you, if, you, if you take that determination, that line of thinking, to their determination to make sure that the presidency comes to the uh, uh, southern part of the country in 2023, you can say that, look, these people have their game plan to counterpose whatever any other part of the country is, have, is, 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 is putting on the table. They, they clearly have their game plan. And what is their, is their game plan? To make sure that the presidency comes to the yeah, southern, but, but, but irrespective if, if, yeah. But if of the North took the same Let position. me just drop this. Yeah. Irrespective of political differences, APC or PDP, mm. or irrespective that the contestation for the presidency is going to be between three key zones in the southern part, part of the country, so the south-south, the south-west, and the southeast. I think that is why earlier I said they shouldn't have brought this to the, 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 the front burner. Mm. Issues can be resolved, you know, behind the scene. Consensus can be built. Yeah, but sometimes it's important to declare your hand you know, they, publicly, they, so they there's are, no question they about declared to yeah. Nigeria that, look, we won the presidency in 2003. Right. But other, you know, at times the devil is in the detail. Which part of the South South yeah. is going that, to that, that, That's the, the question presidency. I was going to put to you, Chibuzo Kereke, mm -hmm. because it's one thing to say that, as, as Dr. Mahu pointed out, that you're presenting a united front, but we know that that's not really united because they've all got ambitions for their own zones. Um, how do you think that's going to work out? Because now they've got to go back and say, You've got the South, 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 East, South, West. Who's going to get the presidency? Well, the important thing is that they anchor their demand on the principle of equity, fairness, and justice. And that is very important. So when we come back to the South, we have to follow the same principle. Mm. And what will that principle mean? It means that South, West has produced president for eight years and then vice president for eight years now. It will mean that South, South has produced vice president for two years, and then president for six years. So which zone 
in the south hasn't made a shot at the presidency mm. is southeast. So you think right? essentially that eliminates the southwest uh, from well, having any kind of political other political ambition. interests will come to play. But right. what we are saying is if you go to equity, you must come with clear hands. You can't go to the national to secure presidency to the south with the principles of equity and then upturn it mm. we, uh, when we try to micro zone. And uh, some people have argued that this zoning and all that affect principle of merit and what have you. And my answer has been no. When merits are equal, equity and justice will prevail. In this case, merits are equal. Constitutionally, everybody is empowered to run for the presidency. So we're all qualified, and that is the merit level. Every zone in this country has people with capacity <coughs> and competence to deliver the job. So I'm happy that they have made this statement and is anchored on the tenets of democracy. So when we return, we should also promulgate that. Because without inclusion and participation, there is no democracy. Mm. And if people have been crying, that we need opportunity to give people who are almost 30 years plus and even up to 50 years a sense of belonging guaranteed under chapter 2 of our constitution. Right. I think it's an aspiration that should be met. Okay, and talking time. about giving people a sense of belonging, Dr. Maho, can zoning the presidency to the southwest, I mean the south mm. in general and the southeast in particular help save Nigeria from degenerating further into conflict and insecurity and all the rest of the other problems. See, Charles, there's no doubt. When you look at the country today, when you look at what is happening in the southeastern part of the country, there's no doubt, anybody who is objective, we agree that the southeastern part of the country feel a sense of alienation from the Federation. They have been unfairly treated in the last 60 years in terms of rec recognition, federal presence, appointment. And there's no way, it has gotten to a point, a ridiculous level that is no longer defendable, no matter how you try to defend it. And what the Southeast has, each time we talk about the Southeast, every you point at the Second Niger Bridge. These guys are not talking about the Second Niger Bridge. What they are talking about is political inclusion. Mm. They want to feel a sense of inclusion when it comes to the fact that it, we have, it is, is one Nigeria. When you have a government that is implementing divisive policies across board, when it comes to pol uh, the, uh, the political, economic, and social scene, a people are bound to agitate. You can have a federation, a federation unit with three major ethnic groups, and one group is left behind. We can give instances where the divisive tendencies of this country affect primarily the southeastern part of the country. And obviously, the result is that they feel a sense of marginalization. marginalization. Mm. And it is this sense of marginalization, unfairness, that is giving rise to people like Nnam Dukano, unfortunately. However, the federal government, the Nigerian Federation, I believe, for once, to accept that the Southeast is a marginalized part of the country. They never had it so bad. Immediately- But is it unique to the Southeast though? I mean, it, they are, the, the, there are the, so the, many aspects the, of this country the case of that the simply South, don't cater for anybody. The case of the Southeastern part of the country, mm. you know, we all agree that one way or the other, many parts of the country can, can claim that they are being marginalized, but the Southeast is a special case. Since 1970, when the Civil War came to an end, and of course the Gowan administration declared a policy of uh, no victor, no vanquish, you find out that as at 1979, because of that policy, you had a, a, an Igbo person mm, attain, yes, Alex Ekwebe. Just nine years after, after the, the Civil War. He shows that his policy of no victor, no vanquish, reconstruction was working at that time. At that time. Right. But what has happened thereafter? Is that people have a yes. short memory, yes. basically. What, ha what has happened after then? And what has happened specifically in the last six years? Right. Okay, let, let me bring you in, Chibuzo Okereke. Is it this 
political tribalism, if you like, if I might use that term, that's to blame for the problems in, in this country? Or is Nigeria's democracy weak because it is an imported ideology that's imposed on an artificial political unit known as Nigeria, bearing in mind that the territory known as Nigeria has emerged not from an African but a European logic? Well, I, I don't think it's political uh, tribalism. It's, uh, it's a, a unique political system that nature bequeathed to mm. us. Even before now, just like uh, he mentioned, and I agree with him totally, before now we have three major ethnic groups, even though we recognize there are many minority groups. And they carried on to this period. We should have us push the ethnic minorities up not strangulate even the major uh, uh, ethnic group that contributed to the struggle for independence. And well, a lot of minority groups well, contributed yeah, as they, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, to, but, to the independence Yeah, struggle. but the principle of majority If you look at Anthony Nahoro, if you look at people from, yeah, you know, the, uh, yeah. the, the, Absolutely. the, the Calabar they, they area, mm. Cross River. So, so but tribalism gives you identity is mm. not always in the negative even though in nigeria is used merely as a tool for political mobilization that is the biggest challenge however people these are voting blocks mm. they are also political blocks aside their cultural identities so it's important that when you have a system you recognize how unique your system is and take steps to address things that bring the country together and unite, you know, the country. And chapter two of the constitution heavily captures this. Is the operators of the constitution, and that's why I agree with him. The leadership style, the the personnel of the individual, your 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 beliefs, mm. you know, can affect a country. And that is why leadership is very important in driving a united Nigeria. If you are, try, you know, connected. To your ethnic group and you can't rise above that to recognize the country as captured in history at independence each of these ethnic groups were speaking for their ethnic nationality nobody was speaking for nigeria and that is what we are still battling today who is that leader that will rise above ethnicity because we should no longer be speaking just for our ethnic group, mm. but for the country, since we now have a country. And that is the challenge we are facing. We are still at the struggle of independence. That's a very, very important that. point. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Maho, we've got about a minute and a half or so before, sadly, we have to end the chat. But looking at the analysis from both of you and your viewpoints, it all seems to point to the complexity of what lies ahead, whatever route you take as the 2023 general elections approach and as Nigeria gets older, basically. See, what Nigeria need, let me just carry on from what mm. he, 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 he said. What Nigeria need at this point in its history is inclusiveness. Whether you are a minority tribe or majority tribe, what we should strive for is inclusiveness. The so perception the, of inclusive. The inclusiveness will now mean that we need a leader. Right. Or our leaders, our leaders should forge a country that is inclusive, that carries everybody along. We should not, we should not go on thinking about ourselves as we need a leader that is broad-minded enough to mm. carry everybody along, not myopic, not tunnel vision. A leader who recognizes our diversity and work within that diversity to create citizens that right. are Nigerians okay. first before they are Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, or right. others, and before they are note, Christians or Muslim. Right. Very on that important. note, un unfortunately, we're out of time. And uh, uh, <laughs> I have to say that it, no matter the president you produce, he okay. must come from somewhere. Okay. Uh, Chibuzo Okereke and, of course, Dr. Austin Maho, thank you very much. Yeah.